Hello everyone, I am Sophia Ring, SP Saturn the 7th, and you are watching Anime Egotists. Enjoy! And welcome back to the Anime Egotists, where we don't get a lot of Valentine chocolate. The last time was, I think, elementary school, and that was yeah. when we got... Yeah, uh, though to be fair, I just buy, ch I just buy chocolate for myself regardless, because self-love is important. Yep. Anyways, my name's Alex, and honestly, I don't know what anime character would work perfect for me, because in all honesty, I just, I like being single. I can understand that, and I'm Richard. That is correct. And Richard, one of our last videos, we paired anime characters together that really nobody would expect us to pair together, but in some ways, I'd like to think we made it work. Yeah, they were more of those that their relationship, at least if they have, if they've interacted at all, is, hasn't been very romantic, but we could see them uh, building a relationship from there. Uh, but this time we're going the other way. All right, y'all got to be cool in this video because we're talking about characters who've interacted and in some cases we'd like to think they should have gotten together. Now, I know how some of you are. All right. Be cool about this because, dear lord, I can't deal with a I can't deal with an angry comment section. But normally our fans are pretty good about that. Yeah, but I hope this we're able to keep this one civil. I again, I, this one will be interesting. <laughs> yeah, just characters we feel like we like their interactions in a way they could they'd work together, and that also means that sadly some characters won't end up with them. But like you said, just be cool. Just be cool. Speaking of cool, I'd like to think you guys are, because we finally got past 500 subscribers, and I, I honestly, I did not think we were going to get that far. Normally, this is where I do some joke about why you guys are here, but in all honesty, it, it's really nice that people are subscribing and wanting to see more. Thank you, guys. It really does mean a lot. Yes, it's much appreciated. Yeah, but let's get this controversial list over with. Can, do you mind starting us off while I just prepare? All right. So this is one that they do end up with um, other people in the end of the series. I put Ichigo and Rukia should have ended up together. Oh, God damn it. I liked their relationship more than I like uh, Ichigo and Orohime and Rukia and Renji's. Just, I know that there were, they always kind of played that there were feelings there, at least for Orohime towards Ichigo and uh Renji towards Rukia, but I just felt that Ichigo and Rukia had a better relationship overall. They were constantly making fun of each other, but you knew that they cared for each other, and they really, like, especially once Rukia got her powers back and started actually fighting rather than being the damsel in distress or the person who needed, uh, who dished out the knowledge their relationship got even better, I felt. God, you had to start with one of the most controversial ones, dude. I thought we were going <laughs> to, like, build up to it so maybe people could learn to trust us before we pull the rug out from underneath them. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess Orihime kind of falls into the realm of I like her. I guess she falls into the realm of I like her, and I'm not completely sure what it is. And so, in a sense, I like seeing her happy. At the same time, though, I can kind of understand, but I guess part of it's just I'm not much of a shipper, so in a sense, I kind of feel like, eh, as long as everybody's alive at the end, then I guess it works out. I mean, I think the issue I have was the fact that both um, this relationship, Ichigo and uh, Orohime's relationship, felt very similar to Naruto and Hinata's, and they never, because Bleach went on in the fact that um, the girl isn't really, like, she's got the crush, but doesn't, like, um, how to put it, doesn't force, uh, is kind of shy about it towards the boy at first, and then it develops throughout the series. So uh, you're saying that's Ichigo and Orihime? Yes. Okay, okay. And, but the issue came that because the anime went on hiatus, I'm not. I know the manga finished. Bleach's manga finished first, I believe, for um, the. But most people who watch just the anime got to see Hinata and Naruto get together first because Bleach isn't even finished yet because they're on the arc that would will end with, unless they change it, 
Ichigo and Orihime ending up together if they, because I, I assume they're going to do the uh, canon ending, ending for the manga. To be fair, if they didn't, that might be even worse. I know. That's why I have a, I'm hoping that they just stick with where it is, but because I know w- this is just the relationship I felt was better overall for the series. I, I guess I can co-sign. I'm going to be honest. When you brought up Naruto and Hinata, that almost made it sound like, oh, well, I don't even like them that much. And I'm like, oh, this list is going to this list is going to get juicy. But no, I, I suppose like... we might get to that when we get to that. I haven't seen your list, so I don't know. No, I, I like that relationship. And Ichigo and Orihime is OK. It's just to me, because those two relationships feel similar and I knew Naruto and Hinata's ending first, that's why I I feel like it's like, okay, it's the same ending. They're coming from the same era, so I can understand why they have similar stuff like that. So so if the roles were reversed and Ichigo and Orihime got together before Naruto and Hinata, do you think that you'd, you'd be like, oh, Naruto and Hinata just copying Bleach? Possibly. I Again, I don't really know how I would feel. Uh, there's, at least has some more moments where you feel that they're developing it unfortunately i mean orihime i think kind of hints at it a few times with ichigo but never it's never like open it's like oh we're friends and then that's kind of it yeah i i guess i guess i have to go sign good lord so that was a pretty fun video guys be sure to like comment subscribe <laughs> ah, 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 ah. it's your we're turn not, we're not done we're not oh, that done was, that was just the first entry <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I I can I can co-sign. So my first list, my first go, pick, go right ahead. Well, you start off with the controversial one, so I guess I can do my hi right, because I want to contrary the popular belief. I actually want to save you in some aspects, so we're both stuck doing this together. <laughs> oh, good John Cena above. <laughs> Asta and Mimosa from Black Clover. Okay. <laughs> look, I, 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 look. this is not one of those cases where I'm like, oh god, Noelle's the Sundere, so I hate her. No, I love Noelle. Noelle's awesome. But at the same time, I kind of feel like in some cases, her character is no longer just her crush on Asta. So in a sense, I'm kind of thinking to myself, does it even really need to happen in some cases? Not to mention, I just like Mimosa's sweet personality, despite the fact that she can be totally terrifying. And the idea that her brother would have to deal with Asta uh, all the time because her brother's such a <laughs> jerk. I could see it. Um, this one, again, I know is a little controversial due to the uh-huh. fact that uh, so many people uh, put Asta and um, uh, Noel together. Yeah, uh, I didn't want. I didn't want to say it. I really didn't want to. But uh, again, but then there's also. Um, Asta and the nun. No, 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 no. I, I don't, I don't accept that. I unacceptable. But in all honesty, I just look. A lot of people give Black Clover a rough time because they always do the cliche things. Which what, take a look at every other anime. Every other anime has a lot of cliches. So I kind of feel like if people look, look, I don't care what you ship as long as like as long as it's cool, but. At the same time, I get the feeling people, it might feel like kind of a cop-out if ever, they just go with the cliche, oh, the main character ends up with the tsundere. I feel like people would be, sh- without contra- while contradicting themselves, I feel like in some cases they might be upset about that, but like I said, this is controversial. And like I said, I love Noel. I love him. I lo- there aren't too many characters in Black Clover I'd say I hate, but I just prefer his inner Asus interactions with Mimosa and... Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, and it's nice because she's kind of the first um, noble royal bloodline that treats the commoners uh, so much better than like all of the uh, uh, all of their contemporaries. So that's also really nice to see. They actually get along really well, which is nice. Yeah, I wouldn't cry and complain if Asa and Noel happened, but I would just be like, oh, well, that's that. It's what I expected. So what? So who who cares? Exactly. I'll, I'll co-sign on to this one. I think this one could be a nice one. Jesus Christ. The, the, the next few I have aren't quite so controversial, but hopefully some of our audience is still there, but I don't have high hopes. Yeah, the, we started off with the big guns, I think. 
I it's your fault. It's your fault for that. But <laughs> you're just, welcome. Let's move. Let's move on. So, I put uh for my next one, uh, Tsunade and Jiraiya. This yeah, I had a feeling. This one kind of got hinted at a little bit, but then uh, when they unfortunately killed off Jiraiya, not, it didn't happen. Um, it, it's been like it would have been nice to see like if we got like flashbacks if Jiraiya maybe helps uh, Tsunade get over uh, her loss of um, her love interest from the was it the third Shinobi World War mm. um, and all that and just them developing a relationship you you know that Jiraiya has always liked Tsunade they they talk about that throughout the series but you know um, but you know Tsunade she liked Orochimaru then she had her I, I think it's Da is it Dan is that the name of the guy that she liked Don yeah yeah so um and then she had and she was dealing with that forever with that and her fear of blood and all that from his death it would be nice to have seen them and then eventually she starts developing a crush but it's right at the uh towards the end of Jiraiya she goes on his kind of final mission and you know she has a crush on him and all that at that point so at some point so by this you mean Jiraiya would probably still be alive either that or um just if there had been time earlier in the series that they gave them to start, kind of get together a little bit maybe that could have worked but uh, I understand why they didn't it was kind of one of those uh love at the wrong time kind of moments yeah now that like when she's like please come back and he's like oh you'll cry for me that'll be rich I'm like oh dude why did you have to hurt us like that exactly I mean, it, it's one of the most emotional moments because you feel that I mean Naruto's very upset about it like i mean they don't necessarily give tsunade the, enough time at this point to really uh show that like how much she's mourning him well that's because naruto's being a jerk and saying oh well if the old man was still hokage then none of this would be happening and i'm thinking that old man left you alone in a house let's not act like tsunade's the bad guy here yeah lord, lord Thir- like it's one of those well you do know that if he hadn't been hokage for before your dad took over and when he was third after your dad died a lot of this wouldn't be happening right uh, we do know yeah. that yeah we're gonna have to talk about the third okage at some point i'm sure but yeah Tsunade and jiraiya but you want it more for the ship purposes i want it more just because i want jiraiya to still be alive from the sounds of it yeah i i, I mean of course we all want jiraiya to still be alive he was one of the best if not the best character for a long time yeah oh boy all right just to, we never went over this but just just to clarify there there are no pokemon chips on your list correct i didn't put any no oh thank god good me neither sure shippers are one thing but toxic pokemon shippers terrify me especially since there's so many cool ones who are nice and i want to hang out with but my next one go right ahead geo and luna from mega man star force okay yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this, guys, but I actually kind of prefer the snarky Sundere-ish character over the nice girl. I know, there's a first time for everything. But in all seriousness, while Gio is going through his depression of his father being missing, Luna's kind of the first person to more or less open up and talk to him. Sure, she doesn't handle it the best way. She's just like, hey, come to class, come to class, we need perfect attendance. And they don't start off on the best of terms. But it kind of does a good job of showcasing how they're both kind of in the wrong with certain things they're doing. Not to mention, it could kind of make it come full circle because she's in love with Mega Man, but she doesn't know Geo's Mega Man at first. Only to realize it and be like, hey, just so you know, I'm in love with Mega Man. I'm not in love with you. And Geo's like, I could not care less. I don't care. But it's kind of also at that point where they're kind of starting to become friends. Not to mention, as the series progresses, they both actually do open up and become better friends with each other. And she actually does admit to herself, oh, no, it's not Mega Man, it's Geo. But and all, but we never got full closure because the games ended up stopping, But which they did just to hurt me, I'm convinced. But in all seriousness, there is something about these two that I think, you know, as they get older, sometime down the line, I wouldn't hate this. I can understand that. Um... 
again, I never played the Star Force games. I'm hoping that you get your uh, collection that, and they give you all the games that came out in Japan that didn't come out uh, for uh, the U.S. market when that happens. But uh, I'll go ahead and co-sign. I'd be interesting. I, I mean, I've never really paid that much attention to Mega Man ships, but I know that besides Roll and Mega Man always getting shipped together, that I think that's the, unless they're, what is it? Is it the original their siblings and then every other one their other oh, people? Oh, of course, of course they are. I don't, I don't know, honestly. I feel like that's more your wheelhouse than anything. Unfortunately, I don't know much of the original Mega Man's. I only know uh, Battle Network and a little bit of Star Force that I've learned from you. Yeah, and also just this little thing. Uh, uh, look, I love Sonia, and I love how nice she is to Geo. But like, I, like Geo goes through a lot. And as much as I'm on the side, like as somebody who deals with anxiety, depression, all this other stuff, it's nice to have somebody there to tell you, "Hey, I support you. I care about you. We'll go at your pace." But at the same time, it's also nice to have somebody like Luna, who's like, "Look." What you're going through sucks, but if you don't do what you're, if you don't snap out of it, we're all going to die. At some point, everybody kind of needs a kick in the pants, and they're both kind of that for each other. Okay, that that is a good kind of relationship. I think that could work well. Uh, I can't think. I'm trying to think if the, there was a similar relationship in uh, the Battle Network era, but because that's what my wheelhouse of Mega Man knowledge, and I can't really think of one right now, but. It doesn't mean there's not one. Yeah, uh, but like, but like I said, Sonya, I love you, I do, but I just prefer Geo and Luna. Okay. All right. So my next one. Please move on. So this is one that we've talked about liking uh, before together, and I think might have been on your list. So hoping it's it. not Ryuji and On from Persona Five. It's not on my list, but I one thousand percent agree. Yeah. I, I almost I feel that again. I know I, uh, a lot of people. I feel do like putting on in the. Is it Ren is the main character? Uh his name is Ren, but it's not as popular as a, of a ship as you think. Oh, okay. Well, that's it good. Really isn't. I'm pleasantly surprised because I was thinking that a lot of people because she's the first character that uh, is revealed. That's always a popular yeah. choice. It feels like. Yeah, but continue. But yeah, th they just feel like they have. A relationship they both go through trauma uh due to the um the coach at the school and all that and both have to overcome it um again they're both for that first group of people that get together in the game so that always kind of feels like there should be more of a connection there uh, i know you know more of the seer of the game so what other parts of their relationship do you feel well, it's kind of weird because there are moments where they, because they, look, as much as we love them, they also bicker like an old married couple at times. And they used to know, and they used to be really close when they were in middle school. Well, and they obviously kind of start to drift apart before Ren showed up and they became the best of friends again. And as much as we, like I said, as much as I don't love the perverted trope in the anime, <laughs> Ryuji and Odd kind of have a way of, not making it lovable, but making it kind of weird because there are scenes where, what there are scenes where he'll like start gawking it on, and I I don't enjoy it. But when somebody else tries to get in her face and it's like, hey, why don't you come with us? He's the first person to be like, back off. Off. She said no. Leave her alone. He's very. They're both very protective of each other, almost to the point where she kind of starts to tease him for it. It, it's just weird because there's also a scene in the games where she starts asking you, Ren and Ryuji, so who do you guys like? And I'm just like, aren't you got you guys are both in the room. Should I should I just push you two together? Because it's this feels weird otherwise. Yeah, I, I mean, it's one of those that now, as a, I want to play the game and I just need time to buy it or see if I have it on that download list that we talked about at one point. Yeah, but I I really wish that this was one of those. If you if you didn't try to put uh, Ren and On together in the game, by the end of the game, it just kind of puts them together. I think that could have been interesting. Yeah, especially they just have a, a they just have a lot of moments where it, where it kind of just feels like oh yeah, there's something going on between the two of them because they're both passionate about what they do. They both stand up for their friends, but they're also both kind of idiots, and in a way that kind of works. 
Exactly. And as I said, even from my knowledge coming mostly from the uh, anime where they're, they have less interaction because it's, they've got to cram hundreds of hours of gameplay into uh, 24 episodes or 25 episodes. So I still feel like they have a better connection than most of them, especially because they don't force any of the characters together with Ren in that, at least in the version of the anime I watched. Which, in all honesty, knowing knowing how the knowing how shipping bases can be was all actually probably the right move in some cases. Exactly, because especially with Persona, because you can pretty much date any of the female characters in the yeah, game, but, but none of the guys, huh? Go figure. But but so does that, so does that mean my ship of Ryuji and Mask Girl wouldn't be canon? That's if you put um, Ren and on together, you get uh, Ryuji and Mask Girl. Oh god! Well, either way, it looks like Morgana is miserable throughout it, so I'm okay with it. That could be like one of the fight reasons that like Ryuji and uh, Morgana get angry at each other. Oh god! No, oh god! More of that. Yeah, who would have thought in that whole video we did, I didn't say Lucas and Ursula from Pokemon once. <laughs> but yeah, I like, but yeah, Ryuji and An definitely, like, I, I purposely never romance On because I'm like, her and Ryuji, it's, it's there. Yeah. All right, so your next one? Kyo and Susie from Zatch Bell. Okay. Honestly, look, I love Megumi, Tia's partner, and I like her interactions with Kyo, but I always felt so bad for Susie because she didn't have any powers, she didn't have a Mamoto, she wasn't anything special. She was just always kind of there for Kyo. She was very grounded. Okay, she herself wasn't all that grounded, but she was kind of the relatable voice of the audience. Like, I don't know what to do to help, but I still want to help in any way I can. Not to mention when Kyo was closed off and being bullied by people, she was the person who was always there saying, hey, if you ever need somebody to talk to, I'm here. I have your back. That sort of thing. And for her to basically just get shoved to the sideline, not that she needed the Mamoto or anything, I don't know. As much as I like Megumi, I kind of felt bad for Susie in a way. I, I kind of felt like, dang, she got done kind of dirty. I can understand that. I would have loved a moment where, like, um oh god what was his name again sorry Kyo. Kyo uh like loses the book and somehow she's able to read it for a moment just just to give zash the command to uh save uh Kyo from something and just show but yeah just show that she has a connection with zash and uh Kyo in some way yeah and now the manga has now the manga is still going on thanks to the sequel I don't know if Susie has shown up yet because I've I've fallen a bit behind. But at the same time, I'm kind of just like I hope there's something there. Yeah. I mean, of course, we want this series just to come back in general. Just tell the entire story in English, please. I mean, I'm cool with that. But I also let me put it to you this way: I have a fe I have a feeling that we're gonna get more now. Whether they just say, "Oh, this is where the man this is the manga stuff," or they redo the whole series, I think we're getting more. But who knows? I've been wrong before. But I still have the manga, so who knows? It, it's kind of a win-win at this point. The real question is, will we get the actual uh, Full Glory song? Uh, I hope the English version, because I've see, heard the Japanese version of that song, and I'm like, oh god, that's why they changed it, because ah, no, no. Well, I, imagine if they hadn't, it would, it would not have been on a uh, God, what was that Toonami at the time when it that was on correct, Cartoon Toonami. Network? It, it could be on. It could be on modern Toonami. Uh, so, so, somehow, yes. But Keo and Susie, I felt like he re Keo really grew to appreciate Susie down the line, and I, I, I just, I just like them. I, I like them. I one hundred percent agree. I think uh, from what I remember in the series, she's always there to uh, be nice. Is always very nice to him, especially when. Uh, Kyo's a jerk to her, like, especially in this first part of the series. Yeah, but who knows? May who knows? Maybe the manga will find a way to to make it come true or make me change my mind. Either way. All right. So my next one? Go for it. So this is another, I think, kind of popular one. Tien and Launch. Thought about <laughs> putting it on my list, but I decided against it. But go ahead. 
it's just one of those that uh, I, I know that at least at first when launch was uh, very flirty with TN, he was very uncomfortable, but I could see it being, I, I would hope that it was more of, he was shocked that she was flirting with him so much and that they could actually develop a kind of nice relationship with each other um, where they're uh, like, it'd be hilarious in Dragon Ball Super where Goku's like, well, you won that one tournament, but that wouldn't be enough to open this dojo. And it's just like, it turns out Watch robbed a whole bunch of like banks to get him the mo- to get Tien the money to open his dojo. It's just like, well, I didn't know she stole the money, even though I probably should have. So I can't exactly return it. So I guess we're just doing this. Yeah, and just again, because Launch is one of my favorite Dragon Ball characters that, and probably my favorite that just kind of disappeared, unfortunately. Besides, like three times where she shows up as. Like, oh, I recognize them. Here, take some of my energy. Okay, so to clarify, this is violent, mean launch, right? This isn't the launch who's super nice and friendly. Uh, yeah, like, um, Tien is in a relationship with violent launch, and um, sweet launch is kind of, uh, she just thinks they're roommates. I, you know, at some point, you'd think the Dragon Balls would split the two up, but I guess that kind of ruins the appeal of the, char- the character in some cases. Yeah, but I kind of did this one mostly just so that we could have launch back in the series on a regular basis. I'd like to think you did it so Tien might have something to do, because Tien's my favorite human character, but sure, let, let's, let, let's satisfy your selfish needs. <laughs> I mean, it would give him an interesting relationship, because just, like... Um, when we get the moment where Vegeta's talking about strong women being uh, say, what Saiyans are attracted to, and Tien's just kind of standing there like, yeah, I understand that. It's just like, wait, so does that mean Tien's a Saiyan? And we get a, and we get a fantasy <laughs> of him going Super Saiyan, but there's still no hair on his head, and we're just like, N- no, he, he's, <laughs> he, he's not a Saiyan, at least I think. But yeah, I, I, I like Tien. I like Tien and Launch. I don't I don't know if I experienced them as much as everybody else did, but I still I found I found their dynamics interesting. I thought it was cool. Yeah, and again, uh, Tien's not my favorite, but I do enjoy his character. And uh, again, I just want Launch to come back, so that's kind of why I put them together. Ah, uh, yeah, and I can understand that. All right, so your next one, Hero and Shield from God Eater. Okay. Honestly, this this kind of confused me when I was experiencing God Eater because Shield starts off as this very like very quiet and kind of I wouldn't say like serious as in me, but she's kind of serious in the sense of she has a, a she has a set way of doing things and she has like a military based background. Whereas one of the doctors tells Hero, "Hey, I appreciate what you're doing, but could you keep an eye on Shield and be nice to her?" She hasn't had a whole, she hasn't had a friend basically since she's been born, and the two kind of have a dynamic together, and they grow to be like incredibly close with each other, to the point where she, when Shield really starts opening up, she considers Hero to be her best friend, and some of you might be thinking, oh, so it's friends, and I'm like, I don't really see it like that. I see it in some cases that she because apparently it is revealed that she does have feelings for him. But I, I don't know, there's something about those two, about the two of them where it's like, he will help her like open up and like experience what being human actually is, while she can help him um, make bullets to shoot origami with, because that does, that does help. Again, I, I need to give the God Eater either the series or actually play one of the games a chance just to get to know some of these characters. Yeah. But... I re- I just really like the two of them. Also, her somewhat sadistic sense of humor, where she's like, "I don't understand how you work, but you're very impressive. Maybe if I t- I cut you open and take a look, look, then maybe I'll figure something out." And the music starts playing, and and here's like, "Wait, no, don't work." And she's like, huh, j- "Just kidding." I'm like, "Yeah, you're gonna have to work on that." But I don't know. <laughs> I really like the two of their interactions, since they both see they both seem like something could come of it, but considering they never really did that's why they're on this list okay again i'll co-side i as i said i don't know the uh, god eater well enough i only my only interaction of it with it is i think watching you watch the series and play the games that is correct 
So, all right. So you ready for honorable mentions? Let's do it. All right. So my first honorable mention is um, one that actually might happen at the end of the series. It hasn't, um, but it hasn't officially happened as of right now. And that's uh, Sanji and Pudding from One Piece. Okay. So, they, so we go through the whole thing where they're uh, getting married for a political marriage between uh, Germa and um, the Big Mom pirates, and then Big Mom's going to betray them and Pudding's supposed to kill Sanji. But in the end, Pudding actually falls in love because Sanji actually tells her that even though or this, despite what she's been told where she has a third eye and is ugly because of it, he's like, I just find that that makes you more beautiful and she falls in love with him because he's actually genuinely nice to her versus like her actual family that some are nice to her and others are abusive towards her and all that with this. So I think this could, and she pretty much does become a tsundere. She had, oh, pretty much has two personalities, one where she's so lovey-dovey towards Sanji and then the other where she's tsundere. So <laughs> Sanji and Nami just isn't happening, is it? I just don't feel like um, that their relationship would fully work. This one feels like Sanji's genuinely uh, nice and not just flirting. It's like he's being nice to her and uh, she feels like she starts changing because she learns to love herself in a way that uh, because, I mean, as I said, like her, literally her mom, big mom, He's told her she's ugly because of the third eye and other and some of her siblings make fun of her for it and call her a monster because of it it's just i think it's one of those relationships that they could sanji would legitimately care for her and pudding would learn to love herself through it as well yeah i i in all honesty i can't understand that when you said pudding i'm like wait is he making this put all oh, the character oh <laughs> that makes sense. Then again, Sanji's a good enough cook that where if he made something delicious enough, I might want to marry it. So who knows? That's true. I could have, I guess, also put Sanji in uh oh god, Luffy, because I think Luffy would probably fall in love with Sanji before any of the female characters. <laughs> you said if he ever shows up on this channel, I'm gonna remind I'm gonna remind him that you said that. Well, I mean uh Luffy would probably fall in love with the person who provides him with meat. That's a good point. And to think at one point you said you'd want to be friends with Sanji. No, I still would want to be friends with Sanji. Yeah, but he would kick you in the face for saying that, and I probably wouldn't stop him. But overall, in all seriousness, <laughs> Sanji and Pudding, you, you did convince me. I do wonder at some point, huh, Nami, that's not <laughs> happening, is it? I mean, and even the creator of the series is pretty much said that he doesn't really want to put any of the main characters together necessarily just because that's not what his his manga is not about that it's about uh the exploration of the uh world and fighting bad guys exactly and i can co-sign on to that all right your first honorable mention Jaden and jesse from Yu-Gi-Oh gx okay in all honesty Jaden pretty much sacrificed everything and sadly everyone to get back to to get Jesse back. And I do like their interactions. They're basically the same except Jesse, you know, has a brain and doesn't have any horrible catchphrases or slang talk. But in all seriousness, the two do find a way to make each other better. And a, a lot of people do comments like, "Oh, well, they're basically kind of the they're basically kind of the same." They they have a unique chemistry about each other, especially with their, how they talk to their cards and everything. So, especially because, in my opinion, Jaden, we've kind of agreed that Jaden doesn't really seem interested in any of the girls around him, and it never really, even if he was, it was never really built up that well. Mm -hmm. So, Jaden and Jesse, I don't know, in a sense, I kind of see it. I can kind of see it. From the few scenes I've seen of, because that's season three, right? So I haven't seen most of season three, but of what I've seen, they at least feel like they get more of a, I mean, they have a good friendship from what I've seen, but it's, that's 
Unfortunately, I ha- these are honorable mentions. These were kind mm-hmm. of the I would be cool if it happened, but I'd also be cool if it didn't happen. I can understand that. I just because I haven't seen most of season three, I can't say one way or the other. But yeah, definitely not like the whole Alexis and Jaden ship doesn't really work because they just they never really build it up. And at least on Jaden's side, Alexis, she might have a crush on him, but. He doesn't seem to care. It's I mean, like, the only other alternative was Jade and Blair. That doesn't really work for a variety of reasons. I, I like the whole thing is like if I could see if someone's one of the girls said, "Do you know I have a crush on you?" He's like, "Oh yeah, I'll crush you in a card game." Oh, damn it. He would <laughs> say he would say that. Heck, 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 you like I've said before, you could argue that Jade had more chemistry with the tennis guy, and if you could said that, if you'd said that to me, I'd be like. Eh, yeah, I can I can kind of see it. They're both kind of insane. Yeah, the God, I mean, he also has a better like a possibility of a relationship with Zane as well. Ah, uh, at least yeah. season season one, Zane. I mean, Cy- in the Japanese version, Cyrus does call Jaden bro, and if Jaden and Zane got together, technically they would be bro. It's in a sense, and yeah, I put two male characters together. If you have a problem with that, that's your problem. That's not mine. Yeah, I, but I, I guess I'll co I Again, I need to eventually watch season three, and I also need to watch 5Ds, but... I feel like we've been saying that for years at this point, and you're nowhere closer. I, I've i watched, again, through the first few episodes of uh, 5Ds, where he's in prison. <laughs> Let's move on before I get sad. <laughs> All right, so my next one is um, another one I think... He, um, you'll be able to talk about a good bit. Uh, Yami and Charlotte from Black Clover. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm conflicted about this one, but go ahead. Well, I just want it to be one of those where Charlotte eventually confesses to Yami and he's like, yeah, I've known. I don't see time. that being you. I <laughs> love Yami, but he's so goddamn stupid. Well, this, this would be the one thing, like, he, he's doing this on purpose. He's like, he's legit, like, he knew she, she had a crush on, crush on him the entire time and just was like, I'm just going to be myself and not care until she actually confesses to me. In all seriousness, if this did happen, it would either be that or they both just end up taking care of each other like Yami suggested, but they're not actually together until somebody just straight up asks, are you guys together? And, Yami, and Charlotte freezes up and Yami's like, yeah, I guess so. I'm like, that didn't sound like a confirmation. It just sounded like you shrugging it off, but that's Yami. Yeah, this is one of those that it'll probably end up happening at some point in the series. There's unless a there's, chance. Unless there's something happening, because I know it's, I think the manga's in Yami's homeland right now, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. I've heard some stuff about the manga, and I'm kind of nervous about it. So this is just kind of, that's why I put it as an honorable mention. It's one of those I kind of wanted to happen just because it seems like it will happen, but it could also just as easily not happen. Yeah, I I, I can definitely see that. That's another video I want to do. Our how we would work in Black Clover. We would probably die. Yeah, but we'll get on to that probably. That might be an interesting video to do soon. Yeah, but I I can co-sign. I do like their interactions, even if like I said at first I didn't like Charlotte, but now I thoroughly enjoy her. All right. So your next one. Uh, this is where things get kind of complicated. Raku and Onodera from Nisekoi. Okay. In all seriousness, upon looking back at the show, oh, all the girls, you kind of root for them in some cases, because in a way, look, look, I joke, but I don't hate Chito Gay. I don't hate her. She's just not as interesting as other options. In all seriousness, though, oh, Onodera just, like, she grows so much throughout the series. It's similar to other characters we've talked about where she gains more confidence, she gains more, she stands up for herself more, she's braver, but she still feels like the same character. She still feels like the same polite, kind girl that we all know and love. And not to say Cheeto Gate's development with Raku was bad, but it's just, it just sort of feels like it just sort of feels like you know what to expect and in a way it does make it kind of uninteresting now it's an honorable mention because in some cases upon my rewatch and looks through the manga even i kind of start to go like hmm 
the two main girls, I like them, but I kind of don't think I want them to win in some cases, but I like Onodera, and in some cases, I kind of just thought it would it be different. It would it would have been different, but the show's full of cliche, so that sh- that shows me. Okay, yeah, because I think I even saw like when I was kind of doing research for this, I remember seeing the Sequoia on there, so I was trying to figure out which one this was. Yeah, and the <laughs> one the the worst part about this is not even who ended up with who, but even the people who got what they wanted were like, "Wow, this was the most boring ending ever." And I'm like, "Yeah." No matter who wins, we all got a lackluster, kind of uninteresting ending. So, did any of us really win? And they're like, no. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll co-sign again. I, I'm kind of interested, because uh, I'm giving other genres a uh, chance, besides, because I yeah, have watched a lot of Isik Eyes and uh, Fantasy Power or overpowered main character kind of stories, so I'm kind of getting tired of them and wanting to find something new that I can enjoy for a little while. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Let me put it to you this way. If it lead, if I start watching Isekai, you know something's wrong. Um, because I've, not that I think it's bad, but I've sworn it off so many times that you might think I've been replaced. But Raku and Kosaki Onodera, not her stupid sister. I hate. Uh, I, I despise her. I despise her sister, and I, I'm seemingly alone on that. Okay, uh, as I said, I'll kind of co-sign. I don't really know the characters well enough because I've never seen the series. Yeah. All right. So, um, last honorable mention, I believe. Right. Wait, didn't you add an extra one? Well, that was just in case we needed. Um, extra coverage i can do it if you want to ex- yep you might as well okay um so this one again will probably happen as the show goes on farther it's uh chrome and uh ruri from dr stone so ruri's the one that was um going to uh is the chieftain's daughter from uh that i talked about in our previous video that uh, uh magma was supposed uh trying to win the hand in marriage to become village chief and uh the whole plan was for them to be able to beat uh magma so that uh chrome can take her hand in marriage they actually already have a good relationship they've uh because his entire thing was ruri was sick and he was trying to find a cure based on primitive medicine because he was kind of the science magician of the village trying to figure out what to do so they already, and they had that relationship from when they were kids, that they liked each other. But then when she got sick, she got kind of taken off to the side. And now he's kind of, whoever marries her, she'll die quickly, unfortunately, and uh, we'll have a new village chief. Well, Chrome ends up losing due to uh, some interference and uh, Senku ends up winning Ruri's hand in marriage. And he goes, great, I'm village chief. I now have command of everything. We're getting divorced and walks away. <laughs> And because he knows that Chrome, he doesn't really have that relationship with Ruri and wants Chrome to be able to get with her. Uh, oh, so it's a nice thing. Yeah, it's just he did that so that he does because if uh, Magma wins, he's they're going to have to be sent away from the village because they're uh, Magma is very much at this point. Everyone, you need the strongest people, and uh, Chrome and Senku aren't the strong. They're they use their brains more and. Just their sweet relationship of Chrome caring for Ruri so much, trying to be there to save her life from something that's in our world is very curable. If I remember correctly, it's just, um, well, it, for someone with a healthy immune system, it's uh, you can recover from it. It's, she has, if I remember correctly, pneumonia, but, um, but in this primitive where there's not necessarily all the medicines and all that, it's a death sentence and uh his whole goal is just like yes he wants to win her hand in marriage and become village chief but he wants um but the main reason he wants to do it is to save her life that is his main goal of the entire uh kind of first part so it's like their relationship yeah and i don't know the series that well maybe someday i will but i can co i can co-sign but it sounds like they would they have some good moments together yeah. All right. Your next honorable mention. 
Shisato and Takima from like Horse Recoil. Okay. In all honesty, these two like this this is an honorable mention because I'm still not convinced whether I want it or not. Like I'm like right literally right in the middle of it. But it but the thing is, is these two do find a way to make each other like their lives better. Shisato finds a way to make Takina smile a bit more, and that's kind of her goal. While Takina kind of finds a way to help Shisato with everything they're going through, these two do a lot for each other, and their friendship is really cute. To the point where it does kind of feel like at some point, maybe the two girls have, maybe they have a thing for each other. But like I've said before in my review, I could see them having feelings for each other, but I could also just see it as, hey, these are two these are two girls who have a really strong friendship or a sisterhood. Part of me also doesn't want it because apparently when, spoiler alert, they don't end up together in the last episode, and the fans of the show attacked some of the creators online, so I'm like, now I don't want you to get, now I don't want you guys to get what you want, so no. So, I, but at the same time, though, in all seriousness, they do kind of have a dynamic that I wouldn't hate if they ended up together, but it's also just a case of maybe they're just friends, maybe they're cool, but I, like I said, it's an honorable mention. I can understand that, and again, that does sound like your your viewpoint, unfortunately, got tainted due to the uh, interaction of fans attacking creators. It's like, you can't always end up with the characters you want, so or you can't have characters end up with other characters you want them to. So, but the again, a lot of times these creators have ideas of who's going to end up together if that's part of the goal to end the series. Yeah, not to mention the crazy thing is the show's coming back, so it's not like it couldn't happen. But if I was the author, I'd be like, hmm, remember when you guys said all that stuff about us and threatened us and everything? We're going to remember that, but the ob- but that might not be the best idea either. Felt I have felt so bad that even I commented in the most simple English possible, hey, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks so much for your hard work. And one of them actually replied, which I'm just completely flabbergasted by. Yeah, I... I don't understand why you would attack someone over having such a uh, thing as simple as a fictional characters getting together. It's so, I don't want to say stupid, but stupid. It's no, no, you're perfectly <laughs> justified. It's stupid. But getting back to Chisato and Takima, they're, they have great interactions together. They both kind of find a way to bring the best and even sometimes the worst out of each other. Just make sure that Chisato knows to do her chores because Takina can't do everything. Can't do everything because Ch- Chisato's a bit irresponsible. I can understand that. So I'll co-sign and hope that the creators either find a way of getting the characters together in a nice special way that, uh, or d- don't face too much backlash if they choose to go some a different way. One thousand percent agree. All right, so my final honorable mention. Let's do it. So I'm putting, uh, this one is kind of hinted at in the show. I don't know if there's actually anything official because there's only like two couples that actually end up together at the end of this one. And that's uh, Sting and Yukino from Fairy Tale. Okay, when you said Sting, I was thinking of somebody else, but continue. So again, this one's an honorable mention because especially at the, when we are kind of getting introduced to these characters, they don't have a good relationship. Because of how their guild Sabretooth kind of works, um, the strong are kind of the only ones that are prioritized, and uh, Yukino loses her battle and uh, ends up pretty much getting, well, she gets kicked out of the guild be- for being weak. And Sting and doesn't do anything to stop this because but this is kind of the view that he's been taught uh, as a member of uh, Sabretooth is that the strong are the ones that survive and thrive so he's uh, unfortunately doesn't have that view luckily due to uh, his growth throughout the series and the fact that um, again kind of power friendship and all of that towards the end of uh, uh, the Grand Magic Games he starts to come around and discover that just being the strongest doesn't necessarily, or having the most power doesn't necessarily make you the most valuable or uh, something. And he does let, uh, when he becomes the guild master at the end of the Magic Games, he does let Yukino come uh, 
rejoin the guild and all that and they have some nice interactions because she kind of joins as like his advisor in the guild is because he's still very young he's the same age as kind of the main cast so to be the guild master at this point is a big deal for him so i kind of like their relationship again an honorable mention because at the start he's doesn't do anything to stop the abuse from the previous master towards her for just losing in a magical sporting event right so that's kind of the part that's like okay there might not be but as there we go it kind of develops a little bit but that was early correct relatively i mean we had seen them a a couple a little bit before now but yeah relatively early i'd like to think she wouldn't hold it against them too much considering everything they presumably go through later in the show yeah because uh because he has his um exceed the little cat uh monster and the former guild master pretty much makes it look like he killed it and that's what leads sting to killing the uh the master so that he becomes the new one so that's kind of where the transformation starts is like his friend who was technically weak but was branded with the guild mark and that's why the master attacked and all that so yeah, but I haven't given Fairy Tale a chance yet. I do want to at some point. I just, I don't know. I'm actually starting to watch some stuff that's coming out right now. And I don't know. There's a lot I'm watching right now. But Fairy Tale's getting closer and closer to the point I can't avoid it. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's one of those that you have to dedicate a lot of time because it's like 300, 400 episodes in total. I'm just going to come back and be like, hey, Richard, I finished Fairy Tale. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it only took like a day. And you're like, wait, but. That oh, doesn't make any sk- sense. You skipped like half the filler. Yeah. <laughs> to be fi- hey, I skipped the I skipped the guy's chin. I skipped the guy with the chin. I skipped that episode and you're like, all right, you're forgiven. Yeah, that that that's yeah. I, I, I debated putting that on my list again as the worst episode. It- Considering how horrible it sounds, I might have just been like, wait, you talk ah, screw it, it's fine. I'm not telling you which episode exactly it is, although you, I think you have it on the list of, or I say which episode it is, so you might be able to skip it. No, yeah, but in all honesty, I can't co-sign. It does sound like they might have some good interactions, and maybe it would work. All right. So your last honorable mention? Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Uh, Kiyosuke and Ruri from Ori no Emoto. Okay. She wasn't his sister. Uh, th- that's good enough for me. No, okay, all right. Let me let me let me try a little better than that. In all honesty, the episodes where it's revealed that Ruri actually likes Kiyosuke are actually maybe the best episodes of the whole awful series, and I will not back down from that. They they actually she actually does open up besides just being this gothic Lolita type otaku character, and she actually becomes more of a, like a real life person. They both have scenarios where they have to take care of their little siblings and don't exactly know how to help all the time but they still try there are episodes where they actually do end up dating and it almost feels like the show is actually trying to be quality and then they break up suddenly because um actually i actually to be fair i don't even completely know why they break up oh joy because that leads to yeah i i to to get to save the author a little bit Apparently, when they saw the backlash, like, oh my god, people really like these two together. Apparently, they made a side manga where they did get together and have a kid, maybe two kids. I don't remember specifically. But yeah, still, it's really... I know, I know, I know, I know. (laughs) Hey, hey, I sat through that show. You didn't. You don't get to be as angry as I do. No, I'm just, like, disappointed, Is I guess. Because it sounds like if... They found a character in a good what and a good out for this series to like develop a healthy relationship with someone that isn't a sibling and just kind of well put it on the side manga so at least they yeah. did that that's a, that's better than a lot of those shows yeah the, the worst the worst part is i would actually call those episodes watchable heck some of them are actually like i'd say maybe even good but then it just it just <laughs> no but Kiyosuke and Ruri, if anybody has a problem with that, that might be my ticking point. I don't yell at people in the comments. I'm very nice to people in the comments. That might be my breaking point. I'll co-sign because it sounds like they would have had a nice, healthy relationship. 
Yep. <laughs> All right. So ready for my last one? Sure. So you probably at least know of these characters. Um, oh, no. I I know what show this is. It's Eraserhead and Present Mike from My Hero Academia. All right, not the characters I was talking. Not the characters I was thinking. I just really like their dynamic. They are always together. Like whenever it's um, like whenever Aizawa is not uh, Eraserhead is not teaching, he's always with Present Mike. That's the thing. Um, they've been friends since they were in high school. They had at one point a dream with their other friend to um to open up a, a hero agency together. Present Mike is the one who came up with uh, Eraserhead for Aizawa. And I just like that they would be that kind of opposite. We got Present Mike, who's loud, boisterous, the life of the party, and then Aizawa, who's kind of dark, brooding, and all that. I think they would have, but they see they get along so well. I think they could have had a really nice relationship. And it would have been one of those that they may have co- kind of uh, come together after the death of their friend and realized that they had feelings for each other or through helping each other through uh, that part. Yeah, I, I guess I can kind of understand. I know, I actually know Aizawa a lot more than I know Present Mike, but I do still know of it. And, and it does seem like with everything he goes through, finding like finding somebody he truly cares about and realizing that it, it could definitely work. But I'm going to be honest, this is not the My Hero ship I was expecting from you. Yeah. Uh, which one were you thinking? I just... I, I mean, was... I was thinking we were going to have a fight because you were going to say Deku and Uraka, Ochak, whatever the hell her name is. I, I'm fine with that. I just... I don't know. At this point, I... It's... At this point, they're high schoolers. I, I, I'm i fine with them getting together and dating and stuff, but this feels like it could have been a legit relationship where they actually end up together, love each other, and this lasts. Versus high school, maybe it lasts. I know some people marry their high school sweethearts and it works out, but a lot of times the relationships end shortly after high school or even after a few years. So I get, I get, we get it. You're a Bakugo Ochako shipper. We, <laughs> we understand. Oh, God. Well, yeah, I know that, but I just know that this, and with all the main characters, there's a lot of, animosity there so i also kind of wanted to avoid that so i picked but i wait, feel like all, this... wait i'm so i don't mean to cut you off but all the main characters hate each other what 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 do you mean the fan base like there's deku chaku deku uh su um bakugo ochako and they all hate each other for some reason when they um... push this relationships very heavily so that this, but this is, feels like, as I said, a legit relationship that could have developed through uh, shared tragedy and uh, coming together to help each other heal. Yeah, I, 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 despite busting you a little bit, I do, I do understand where you're coming from in that aspect. I, I can co-sign. I, I hear Deku and Toga is popular, but I probably already said too much. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that. There's Toga and Ochaku. I, Trust me, pretty much every main cast member, including the villains and even some of the lesser used uh, ones, have probably been shipped by someone with another any of the other characters. So. so that joke I made a while back about Deku and Toga and how that would go down, it's it's very much someone's head cannon. That's probably in the top ten ships. Ah, uh, no, yeah, and I'm not going to repeat what I said because I'd like to think this channel is somewhat safe for work. No, it's not. no, no. Only when, only when, like Jay and Nathan are on, and they're swearing up and down. I'm like, guys, you don't have to. Anyways, but yes, I can co-sign. Yeah. All right, you ready for your final one? Let's get this list over with. <laughs> you say an Akiza from Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Ds. But the motorcycle. No, shut up! Shut up! Shut <laughs> up! Shut up! Even I, when I saw this ending, even I'm kind of like, damn, they didn't get together? That kind of sucks. Even <laughs> I was annoyed at this. In all seriousness, it's Yusei has helped Akiza through so much, and her crush, in, like, I know this is a controversial statement, but her crush never felt like it hampered her character. Other stuff may have hampered her character, but her crush on Yusei never felt like, oh, this is Akiza, she has a crush on Yusei. It felt like, oh, this is Akiza. 
she's a she's a psychic who's terrifying who's grown to love people again and she has a crush on you say i don't know in the sense to me it kind of just feels like these two were kind of perfect for each other in a sense especially with how they talk to and treat with the, and treat each other the only thing i do kind of wish there were more moments where they were just simply like joking and messing around with each other because we don't get it that often I don't know, it just would have been nice to see, especially with how often people tease them about it. I can understand that, and I, I mean, because don't they help her through, because she goes back to her school or something? Yeah. And all that, and uh, so I can understand that. I, Again, I haven't seen enough of 5Ds. I, I've, most of my later knowledge of the series comes through you, so I will go ahead and co-sign. And, I mean, I've seen the because they're in that first little tournament against each other, if I remember correctly. And, That's correct. Um, she's definitely in a dark place there. You can kind of tell from that part. So I could, I think it, it could work. I just need to see the series more to put it. Yeah, in. heck, it, it's not. It doesn't even feel that one sided because there's a kid, because there's somebody who they're trying to help out. It's just like, oh well, why don't you talk to your mom doing this? And then the guy grabs Akiza's hand. He's like, thanks, Akiza. Thanks so much. And Yusei pulls him away really quickly. I'm like, dude, um, l- l- just just relax, Yusei. But in all, uh, plus, Yusei grows up to be a scientist. Akiza grows up to be a doctor. If they had a kid, that kid theoretically should be a genius. Yeah, I, as I said, I'll co-sign. I, I need to watch this series. It's... Well, I am looking for stuff because I'm at the end of a whole bunch of stuff and haven't started anything new recently, so. Yeah, but you say in Akiza, I'm not the biggest shipper out there, er, but even I was like, God damn it, come on! Yeah, it sounds like they should have ended up together, especially with what you've told me about how they help each other, or specifically, you say helps uh, Akiza through so much. Yeah. Heck, it, the, well, the crazy thing is, out of all the main Yu Gi Oh ships, because you know how Yu Gi Oh ships work. It's the main guy and the main girl. This is the one time I'm actually rooting for that because even in Zexel, I'm like, oh, I don't like Tori that much. Oh, you started Zexel? I, I'm, I'm dipping my toes into Zexel. Enough people have sent me clips and they're like, dude, watch this, watch this episode. I'm like, oh, Anna Kaboom's kind of my favorite character right now. With that name, it actually does sound kind of interesting. Anna Kaboom? Yep. Yep, she has a train deck, and it's awesome. But, like I said, Yusei and Akiza, and yes, you know it's serious, because I didn't say Yusei and his motorcycle. I'm that serious about this. Yeah, I had to make that joke. Yeah, and (laughs) once you watch the series, you... uh, Who knows? But anyways, that's all the ships. Are we ready to close out? Yep. All right, so ladies, gentlemen, and others, who are some anime characters that you think could have gotten together? This time, it's characters who actually have interacted enough, not just throwing random people together, despite how much fun that was. But, I don't know. Oh, just please, try to be cool in the comment section. I don't want to shut the comment section off and just say, well, no, this video, we'll never know how well it did. Oh, well. Yeah, and, I mean, I know some of ours, especially at the start, were our more controversial ones that might cause any some issues, so hopefully they're okay. I, do, I think they're not too terrible, and I think our uh, fans are, will hopefully keep it PG. Yeah, yeah. and I don't care. And like you said, we don't necessarily care whether you agree or not. Just be good. Just try and be good to each other, because, like, please. Exactly. And again, if you like our uh, choices or if you dislike, just let us know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is when I'll give Richard the password and everything so he can deal with the comments. And comments off on all videos. <laughs> Ah, knowing how this video does it, we might have to stoop to that level. But be sure to let us know, like, comment, subscribe, and all that other nonsense, and we will see you next time. This has been Alex. And Richard. And you have been listening to Anime Egotists. Good night. Peace easy.